Good morning. This is Dr. Matthew Dunn, host of The Future of Email Marketing, and my guest this morning, delighted to talk with her, even though we've never met before, <laughs> Leanne Marie Webster, a woman of many parts, email marketing expert, virtual events expert. Leanne, inter introduce yourself, please. Oh, hi. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I yeah. love um, I love talking about email. It's such a weird thing to love talking about. <laughs> <laughs> email geeks unite. Somebody's got to love it, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Because it affects all of us, by the way. Um, so super excited to be here and to uh, to have this conversation. Um, let's see. I'm, I've got 20 plus, we're not going to count how many, over 20 years of uh, business marketing and business development experience in a few different industries. I'm a lawyer by training. I noticed that. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> <laughs> not in practice, not doing it anymore though, right? Not doing it anymore, not doing okay. it anymore. Um, let's see. I don't know. There, there's all kinds of ways I could go with that question. So, um, but I've, I've run my current business I've had for 10 years. This year is 10 wow. years. Congrats. And, um, and my prior business is where I learned all about email and the power of email. We can chat about yeah. that. Um, and that's, uh, so I've been in the, email, in the online email game for also for a little over 20 years. So. A little over 20 years. Okay. So you've been, yeah. you've been at this for a while and you're also, we'll, we'll delve into this a bit more, but you have a book coming out. So add author to the tagline there, right? What, I know. When's, when's the book release and what's the title? Um, book will be released in mid-September, okay. and the title is Email Marketing Mastery, and it's 52 tips to build, grow, and nurture your email list without being cheesy or sleazy. Without being <laughs> cheesy or sleazy. I like that. We'll come back to the uh, to the challenge of writing a book and, and Iron Man and stuff like that, but let's, let's, uh, let's do something unusual and talk about email marketing first because I usually end up way down <laughs> a rabbit hole. What? With I wasn't else. ready for that. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you said something interesting. We were chatting just before, uh, just before hitting start on the record about your philosophy about email marketing. Would you touch on that again so we can uh, learn a bit from that? Yeah. Well, so my uh, approach or point of view is called email with heart and heart is an acronym um, that walks through my signature process, which we could go there. But the, the bigger point that I want to talk about is, um, you know, I created email with heart because I wanted to change the conversation around email marketing because mm -hmm. I felt that oftentimes the conversation is build the biggest list as possible through any means possible and then pummel people with messages <laughs> until they break down and buy yeah, and yeah, yeah. that doesn't recognize that there's a person on the other side of that at symbol and and even larger than than email my philosophy is we have a responsibility as um as content creators to do what i call honor the inbox which is really to look at you know how can we this is a relationship that we're building and that's that sacred space that the in the inbox space even though a lot of people don't treat it that way, yeah. but how yeah. can yeah. I as a creator honor that? And then on the other side, as a receiver, mm -hmm. I consider the inbox to be sovereign space. And so how can I as a receiver, you know, um, have some control of who, who gets in the inbox, but even if we take it beyond email, you know, I think it's, it's much, much bigger. It's how do we how do we honor the fact that my desire to get my message out doesn't trump your desire mm -hmm. to, yeah. um, you know, control what, what you get, yeah. you know, yeah. or, or what you see, like, just cause you have my, my phone number doesn't right. mean you can text market message me. Right. Right. You can't right. Tag me in all your damn e Facebook posts. <laughs> <or> <laughs> yeah. like, you know? Yes. Yes. And how, yeah. how, how rapidly, I mean, you mentioned you've been at this for, uh, a couple of decades, and and I think I get to add a a decade on top of that total for myself. But um, so fifty uh, fifty years of email between the two of us, probably. Um, how quickly that's changed. Whoa! Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. It used to be. I think that in I don't know that anybody ever remembers even at the beginning having like an empty email box. Like <laughs> there was probably like day one, right when like the first day you look at your account. So I feel like if there's always been a lot of things coming in, but I feel like that's grown exponentially. Yeah. But I feel like there was a sense of like, um, at least in the very beginning, you know, the email was created, email, it was kind of to replace those direct um, mail letter communications. Yeah. And at yeah. the beginning, I feel like people were a lot more conscious of, 
you know, what am I using this for? Why am I sending the email and what's it all about? And, and it wasn't used in this kind of like manipulative, you know, yeah. blasting kind yeah. of way. Yeah. 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 Well, it was a, it, it, it was a genuine one-to-one -one originally, you know, known person to known person yeah. that we've sort of blown out into a pseudo one-to-one, -one, but really broadcasty uh, and rather rude <laughs> medium all too yes. often. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we, we really saw that in, um, you know, when the pandemic happened, oh, um, yeah. because all of a sudden, you know, it was like, oh, I bought something from you six years ago and it was, I don't care what you're doing and you're, facility when <laughs> you're sanitizing everything like, but i want to know if my restaurant down the street will deliver like yeah. the information you wanted from yeah. the pandemic often didn't come through because it yeah. got yeah. behind all this other stuff yeah behind all this other stuff and and depending on your you know inbox manager of choice where is it do i have to hunt for it did i filter it because of all the other bozo stuff yeah, 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 you know, hide, hide it's, it's become a hide the meaning <laughs> or yeah. something like that, hide the message or something like that. Yes. And yet, the philosophy you mentioned, which I, as I said early on, totally ag agree with that, you know, think about the person on the other side of the app and their inbox, their overloaded inbox before you. Yeah, I mean, this is this may be a funny analogy to bring in, but I, but I get, I get him on messages huh, all the time with, hey, we'll write your content for you. And I've always just irked. I'm like, what makes you think you have to say what I would have to say? And how can I, I can't outsource thinking. P.S. You have no freaking idea <laughs> like what's interesting. So right. this is just more manipulation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boo. Go away. Leave me alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Right. Unsc yeah. They just, they scraped your email from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, I, would, I did a talk a couple months ago and someone said, you know, well, Leanne, Leanne, I, you know, I, I understand what you're talking about. And, you know, I got this opportunity to buy this list of, you know, 30,000 mm -hmm. and, you know, the guy wanted to charge me 2000 and I talked him down to, you know, whatever. And, you know, I can just send <laughs> one email. I just yeah. send one and I go, don't do it. No, it's not even yeah. worth a dollar. Don't like, do it. Don't, don't do it. Yeah. You, you, there's so many reasons not to do it. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. The, I don't care what the metrics are. I don't care if you're like, oh, well, if only 2% of the people open it, which would be very low, then X percent of the people. No. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. That's it's, the stuff that's it's annoying it. everybody about email. It's so let's just it. stop. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth the damage. There, there's, there's a funny, there's a funny uh, sort of push pull that I've, I've noticed. I mean, Campaign Genius, my company, small niche uh, technology that expands a bunch what email can do. Getting in touch with our potential clients is actually really, it's really hard. It's really hard. Like, <laughs> ugh, how do you know, how do we do this? Because if I cold email, no, don't do that. I could buy list. No, yeah. don't do that. I, I mean, the when I do email someone I've never met in some other way, it's like half an hour of really trying to assess, is this worth the interrupt on their side? And right. it's like, that's a responsible thing to do. And, yes. you know, like, and, and not blow it. And if, if they say no, not of interest, no problem at all. But at least I try to invest the time. Totally. We try well, to invest the time to get there. And, and if, to think about it, I love that perspective that you're talking about. And it's one of the um, things that I, one of the elements of heart and is to, really think about what's in it for them to open it. Yeah, and yeah, I think too often yeah. people write their emails one-on-one -on -one or, you know, email blast newsletters or whatever, from the standpoint of, I want you to buy my thing. Yeah. I want you to, you know, sign up for my course. I want you to buy yeah. my book, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not against sales. I'm not against having, you know, that be a desire but you have to write the content from the standpoint of what's in it for them. And mm -hmm. yes, you can, you can give them something and then say, Hey, and I have this other tool that can help you if this is what you want, but mm -hmm. you can lead them down the path, but there's gotta be something in it for them to open that email. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you know, they, they delete, delete, delete. And then delete. that starts hurting deliverability. And then there's all kinds of others. Yeah. Unsubscribe, <laughs> et cetera. It, it, yeah. it, it intrigues the heck out of me that, that email, <laughs> that email survived. <laughs> in part, right? Um, yeah. But it is the last commons, the last digital commons to a great extent. I mean, 
Well, it's, it's, I don't, I'm actually not surprised that it has survived because yeah. it's so powerful. I mean, you know, we see this all the time, you know, the, the hot social media platform will come out and, yeah. It's, yeah. you know, everyone's all in it and on it and they're doing everything. And then the algorithm change, the algorithm change, the algorithm change yeah. Yeah. and, or they start charging or, you know, I remember, I'm sure you do too, when Facebook came out um, and we used to be able to put a post and get in front of organically yeah. for free, yeah. Yeah. 60, 70% of your audience. Yeah. And then it was like 50%, 45%. Now I think you can only get in front of about 15% of your audience organically. Ooh. Wow. Like it's insane how that's shipped away. But my email list, always been my email list. Yeah. And as long as I am doing good practices in order to keep, you know, um, keep myself off of spam lists. Yeah, that's never gone away. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's 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 your actual direct connect, and there are very few of those left. What's your yeah. perspective? Since you mentioned it, what's your perspective on on text messaging for that same kind of you know? Ultimately, you can control the list, you can manage the relationship. What do you think? Viable, useful, maybe well, not. You, you know, it's interesting because I hear people say this all the time. Well, Leanne, you know, text message. I get a 70% open rate on the text message. First of all, I think that's a false open rate. I think all the open rates on text messages, um, DMs through social media platforms, I think those are inflated because I think many people will do what I will do, which is I don't like seeing that red thing. And yeah. there's no way yeah. for yeah. me to delete it or get it out of my queue without <laughs> opening it. Yeah, yeah. And right. so, um, you know, so I have to open it in order to do it. Now, um, I, I personally, not a fan of text messages. Yep. Um, I, I don't mind them if I don't mind them one on one from a friend, you know, or from, right. you know, if your significant other is like thinking about you, yeah. I like getting that yeah. text. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, for marketing, uh, I hate it. Did I? Um, yeah. And, <laughs> Did and the, <laughs> the bigger thing with it, and I know some people don't mind, and, and I, I know I can be a little extreme on this, but here's the big thing with it. You've got to get permission. And when it really sticks to, to me or it's like a big thorn in my paw, so to speak, is when I have to give up my phone number. If I'm signing up for something, mm -hmm. I don't have the option mm -hmm. to not give my phone number. Yeah. And then they take the phone number and I'm giving it as a calendar thing or like something that is not saying, yes, send me marketing messages. Yes, yes. And then all of a sudden I start boom, getting boom, boom. pummeled with them. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, why should this goes back to exactly what I was saying? Like, why should the onus be on me as yeah. the receiver yeah. to have to take some action to opt out yes. when you should have never opted me in in the first place? Yeah. 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 Unless there was a really explicit, do you want right. text messages and from us? Check here. <laughs> right. And if that's like that, I, by the way, I always, uncheck yeah. like, you know, yeah. and I don't give up my phone number. But what really, like I said, what really gets me is there's some things where I can't, um, I can't not put my phone number in, in yeah. which case yeah. Yeah. I will usually put in the wrong phone number. Ooh, like that trick. I have a, <laughs> I have a, I have a Google voice number. I've actually had it since before it was Google voice, but I have a Google voice number connected to my mobile and I use that as a buffer, right? I, yes. if I'm filling yes. in anything, that you yes. know that's not actually friends like friends and family right. like Ooh, you get yes. that number why because i can ignore that a little more easily exactly <laughs> exactly i have the same thing i have the same thing it's open phone or whatever yeah. and yeah. Uh, what's yeah. nice about mine is uh or that i don't know if you can do this with google voice too i can tell it not to bother me during certain times yeah a little bit a little better control and then the, yeah. the, the then the then, then the just, phone itself yeah. yeah. You, you mentioned, you know, you mentioned just because you have a phone number, you, you mentioned just because you have a phone number, my phone number doesn't mean you text me. And it was funny, my brain uh, short circuited because there was a point when phones were actually used for voice. Um, right. <laughs> it was like, right. I and, remember and, that. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, wow. That's a long time ago. <laughs> it, you know, just because you have my phone number doesn't mean you call me all the time. Like that, that was a respectable protocol. In, yes. right in its day and now it's actually flipped over where particularly millennials if you call them without texting first you're being kind of a <laughs> you're a dork. right they're like what who huh what, 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 what yeah why are you calling me yeah yeah <laughs> and, 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 yeah and when i get the odd 
uh, sales call that I accidentally answered that's unsolicited. It's like, kind of chaps me. <laughs> like, yes. don't, don't do that, especially yeah. when it's scripted. Ugh. Oh, oh my gosh. The, and the robo calls. I don't know. Yeah, how, yeah. how is anyone robo. making any money off the robo calls? And, why and I always think it? when things happen, somebody must be making money off this at some point. Because oh, otherwise, why are they still doing it? But I, I can't imagine anybody's making a dollar off a robo call. Like who is answering that call? Who have is you, saying yes to whatever the offer is? Have you gotten any of the ones where it's completely silent when you answer? Oh, no. I do not. What's good. I, that Google voice number is listed as a business number. I don't know why, but I was getting two or three a day where when I'd pick up the phone, absolutely not pick up the phone. He said, <laughs> when I'd answer <laughs> nothing, but like background noise, like sounds like a call center, but no person, no voice, no nothing. And they'll sit on the phone for like two or three minutes. I'm like, Oh, and I'm thinking, ah, voice sampling. Someone's trying to build a profile. Maybe it's the only thing I could come up with. Or just verifying that it's a real person and a valid uh, phone number. Maybe, but I've gotten to where if I, if that line rings, I, I, I answer and I remain silent because if it's a person, <laughs> what? Hello? Is someone there? <laughs> okay. It's an actual human being. <laughs> if it's a robot that just want to sit there, I'm glad to run up their bill on the- And then uh, you're, you're <laughs> in the <laughs> off with them. You're like- <laughs> get, get one of those air horns off the boat and go- <laughs> Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, philosophically, we're very much in, in, in line about that, which is, I'm delighted to hear that because it's, it's not an easy line to hold and there's such a temptation- to to do ethics creep in marketing i think you know it's so interesting because yes and no i mean yeah. yes and no i guess i guess there's a part of me that always like i'm no, no price is, is to pay for my yeah. integrity yeah and what i also find is you know when when i talk to or learn from the people who you know are in that kind of like you know just send just send just build a list build a list they always seem to be in need of adding a lot more subscribers to their list. Yeah. So, and I think it's because they're churning so much <laughs> Yeah, yeah. versus my list, which is not giant, yeah. it's 2,200. Um, but I have a six figure business and 55% of my business comes from my list. list. Yeah. And I rarely make direct offers to my list. Yeah. And, you know, I like, to, I love to speak and I love to do things. And of course I'm always looking for ways to grow my list. But my growth isn't like I need to add 500 and 1,000 and another it, because I'm churning people out. It's, you know, do I, I want to find more people who are aligned and want to and work with me? Yes, I want you on my list. And so I think that um, it's, if, you're, if you're doing that kind of churn and burn, then you're always searching for yeah. the big leaps and the big subscribers and the big things because you know you're going to lose so many. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, if this one pays off, and you're not actually measuring the cost of what you lost exactly. by doing it. Yeah, it's not it's not super sustainable in the long yeah. run. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, we end up with more technical safeguards like deliverability, which you mentioned, and really that that subtly slowly increased resistance to to try anything, consider anything, open anything, answer the phone that <laughs> all of us are experiencing, <laughs> like. Stop communicating with me. And it's yeah. like we're making our own cotton picking problem. <laughs> like, oh, I agree. Yeah. Or the I bad agree. actors are. Yeah, the bad actors are. Yeah. Or the, you know, oh my gosh, the, the like, tagging in the Facebook post. That's the one, um, you know, that was happening for the longest time. And you'd see, I'd be like, well, I don't remember doing it. And it, me and 75 other people. Yeah. And so I've just told people when they do that, I, I remove myself. Yeah. And then I say, I love you. I love knowing what you're up to, but unless we're at an event together yeah. or, you know, I have some parameters, then don't tag me in your post. Well, my, my seriously lifelong best friend since age 12. Uh, I, I almost never go on Facebook anymore. Just gave it up. He's on there a lot. And if I go hang out with him, we play golf. Sure enough, I'm going to get tagged in a post. And my, my <laughs> wife actually said, Frank, please don't tag me. It just drives me bananas. Like, Wait a minute. Why did, why, why did Facebook make it? It's, it's like what you said about having to unsubscribe. Why did Facebook make it her problem instead of I have to give you permission to tag me in the first place? I mean, I understand why Facebook did it, but it ticks. Of course. Me. Yeah. And there's probably a setting in there that I could change. But here's the thing. That's a double-edged sword, right? Yeah. So 
Yeah. I don't want to create work for myself. Right. And I don't, I don't mind if people tag me when right. I'm at an event with them or yeah. do whatever. And I don't want to have to say yes, 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 yes yeah. to yeah. 25 tags that I want only so that I can stop the one, two or three, five or whatever tags that I don't want. That you don't you know want. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So we end up, we end up spending a ton of time. Right. Right, Ma you know, managing that ratio. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's work to stay private and polite. It is. <laughs> what? It is. When did that happen? <laughs> when, uh, now, to be, to be a little bit fair, and to tell tales on myself and you know the gray hair at the temples, I grew up in a really, really small town up in the up in the mountains of Colorado. So small that no kidding, four digit dialing. Old mechanical switch at the four did you dialing? I mean, I've done seven, but not four. Four, four. yeah. I'm, I'm getting the phone switch probably. I, I know some of the party lines there actually ran on the barbed wire to ranches. I'm not making that up. <laughs> but back in the days of party lines on telephones, early history of the telephone, you had some of the same problems. They just weren't as visible and big. You know, so and so listening in on the party line was an actual known social problem. So that's staying right. private was work then as well. Wow. And there's nothing so... like a small town where <laughs> everybody yeah. knows your business. That's whether right. Or not you want them to. That's right. Right. So, <laughs> you know, there's some human nature. Just the scale got a lot bigger. Yeah. And yeah. Everybody's, got, everybody's got multiple wires into your uh, brain these days. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so shift gears, you must have had to think through a bunch of this as well as you know work through 20 years of experience to to start formulating 50 odd 52 i think you said tips in a book how'd you go about tackling that how long did it take um well you know it's interesting it it kind of flowed out of me pretty easily i would say or at least i'll say like 35 of them did like okay. Okay. <laughs> the rest i had to really think about but you know because of my email with heart structure and because yeah. that's my signature system i what i kind of did was just i looked at how are the ways that I always work with my clients and what are the things that I, when I give talks, what are the, the things that I'm always talking about or what are yeah, the questions yeah. that I always get asked or what are my kind of go-to, um, here's how you build, here's how you grow, here's how you nurture. Mm -hmm. And this came out actually fairly mm -hmm. easily. Okay. Okay. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Was, there, was, was, um, how do I put this was was writing and expanding on that to make you know the, the sort of word count that goes into a book also easier was it hard was it hard to wrestle uh, it down or did you have to feel like oh man this is so short no one's gonna actually get what I'm saying right well I did um, it is a tip book so it's it's a it's a little on the smaller scale yeah yeah and I picked that intentionally as my first printed book because I felt like writing a book to what you're kind of alluding to, right? It can be feel like a big process. It can yeah. take a lot of time. It can, yeah. you know, and how do you organize it? And what's the flow look like? And I know I've got a few books in me. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I'll start with this because the structure, I can have it make sense mm -hmm. fairly quickly. And I feel like I can take someone on a journey fairly easily because it's something I do um, often in my business. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then I, and, and the, company that I'm working with, the publishing company or the publisher is, you know, they have kind of a structure that they walk through as well. So oh, okay. I was like, all right, I think I can plug my thing into your thing. Yeah. And then we can be on the other side of this fairly quickly. So okay, so let, let's get even geekier. Did you write in Word, uh, Google Doc, an online editor? What'd you actually, what'd you actually write in? Um, I actually wrote it in, um, it started in Word, it started in Word. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I had notes in Evernote. So okay. I was trying to think yeah. if I'd read the yeah. original. Yeah. But it started more because, again, I took a lot of the stuff that I talk about when I give talks or yeah. all of that. So it was like, oh, okay, well, you know, let me just pull my kind of my script. The way I do my talks and prep for my talks is I yeah. kind of write a script. Okay. And then I yeah. play off of that. So I took a lot, some pieces of those things and put it together. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, that I, 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 I've, I've, uh, been in a few different fields and i remember reading that one of the characteristics about writers that's a surprise writers is in like maybe famous ones or people who do that for a living is the the writing tools and process become very much part of how they do what they do when um when eugene o'neill the playwright 
uh, who ended up with Parkinson's near the end of his life, when O'Neill stopped being able to write with a pencil, he stopped mm -hmm. writing plays. And he could have had, he could have dictated, he could have had someone take that, but uh, like the, the biomechanics of writing wow. were set for him. Wow. Wow. And, and Tennessee Williams wrote on a typewriter always. Wow. Except for the wow. Glass Menagerie, which he wrote in pencil in, in one of those little school notebooks. Cause I, actually, oh, wow. I held the manuscript in my hands, which was amazing. But, but <laughs> now we've all got, you know, way too many digital tools. I know. And it intrigues what? me to, to ask about that process stuff because some people still outline with a pencil. Some yeah. People, you know, some people write with a pencil. Respect can't do that. <laughs> <Some> <laughs> well, people, I mean, I, I still do write a lot of things. Like okay. I have these, yeah. um, and these are my uh, journals that I take a lot of notes, like first time client notes or just different yeah. things in that. So I still very can be very tactile. Yeah. And I yeah. even yeah. have, I don't use this for my calendar calendar, but I even have like a planner Paper plan. where, yeah, where I still do, it's called commit 30. So it's like, it has, it's where I can like outline yeah. um, things that it's my gratitude journal. And so I, nice. but I also use it for planning and for like an overview. Like when I think about my year, like this mapped out and yeah. some key things in the year. So I, I still really like <laughs> the, and, and ironically and funnily, and you'll appreciate this, all the studies, the studies by all the experts are now saying, guess what? You know, writing, scribbling is actually better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You'll remember more. You'll take yep. in more. And, yep. and I'm going, well, yeah, as a visual communications guy, I could have told you that. I, I, I have the handwriting of a serial killer. I can't even read it. So I don't do that. <laughs> I literally looked this morning at something and I'm like, I don't know what that note says. Nice. Like, I, nice. I, I, I can't just, well, would I have to, like, would, was like, I have to sign a check or something like that. Sometimes I feel like I've almost forgotten what oh. to do. I'm holding up a pen if you're listening to oh. podcasts. Like, how do you hold this and what do you do with it again? Because I can go through weeks. With, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? yeah. Oh, no. I have every i mean this is my like to-do list for the week nice like, I, yeah I still do. To do list i did i my mechanic my biomechanical process for sure involves a keyboard like just wow. got wedded to that and can't not plus i have the handwriting of a serial killer and i type really fast so i was like <laughs> i can live with that but it's that's that's got a cost as well right it makes for us one kind of structure works other structures don't really work. I don't know the keyboard keyboard is the most effective thinking tool, honestly. I agree. I agree. Well, it's interesting because now that, now that I understand a little more robustness of your question, when I think back, I did have, I have another journal. Yeah. <laughs> this is like my ideas thing. Nice. And so this is where I map out a lot of things. So I will right. like, if there's something that I'm like thinking of, yes. Yes. Before I would ever touch the keyboard, I yeah. will usually map it out. Map out the outline or something like that in yeah. this book. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then go. Where do I pull it from on there? Yeah. Okay. So you, yeah, that's one of one of your ways of structuring, of, you know, of, of getting externalizing the thoughts and structuring them enough to then hang words and yes. paragraphs and sentences and things like that. Yes. On them. Yes. Um, I I the, I spent a few years um, doing explainer videos. Uh, we were one of the we had one of the first studios doing that uh, two thousand eight two thousand nine, and I had had a wonderful artist on staff, Heather, uh, like she was amazing. But her her thing was you know execution. She could draw anything, make any visual, but like what do you want it to be was left to me as the director writer. And you can see the whiteboard over my head. It's like, I would make these awful whiteboard scribbles. And she'd go, okay, got it. Like that yeah. was that was our process for working. Wow. I would think it through on the whiteboard and you know, it, it looked like a chimpanzee got loose with the markers, <laughs> but it was enough of a map for the, her to then turn it into something, you know, polished. It was like, it was kind of a fascinating, we yeah. got a shorthand after right, we right. <laughs> were doing that because I couldn't, I couldn't write if I wrote out instructions in English. She'd be like, ah, "Yeah, this isn't visual. Yeah, I need visual." Right, yeah. right. Yeah, that a whiteboard, so I guess that kind of makes sense too. Yeah, so it's kind of <laughs> interesting. I, as as we 
got thrust into virtual. And I, well, I do want to talk about virtual events, which I know you've got expertise in. As we got thrust in by the pandemic to everyone's working remotely, mm -hmm. I, I noticed that people were starting to realize how much stuff got left out <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, once they were in the office together, once they couldn't be at a whiteboard together, and how hard it is to, to, to take that shared brain stuff and make it work in a virtual setting like the like the conversation we're having now. I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we'll ever be there, truthfully. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, there's a there's a I think there's nuances to both. You there know? are yes, um, and yeah. I think there's because it's interesting because the one of my main um, service uh, programs is called Lead Machine Weekend. It's a three day experience yeah, where we it. create your lead magnet and we set up all the technology and yeah, and it's a it's a wonderful like get it done in three days. Yeah. And I was doing those live or in person, always live. <laughs> I see them live. Haven't done any dead yet, but <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm just steal that. Doing them in person in mm -hmm. Chicago or Denver mm -hmm. um, for a couple of years, and my coach kept saying, "Can you do it virtual? You should try it virtual." And I was like, "No, no, no, no." And then, literally, to, uh, yeah. the, be before the pandemic, I want the record to reflect before the pandemic hit. A week before, but still before, um, I was, I, I have been, well, probably about a month before the pandemic hit, I have been kind of wandering around and, you know, doing one of my walks by the lake and like universe help me things. And I like, gosh, this is just not, I know it's a great product. I know we deliver amazing service. Everyone has a great experience. Not unrolling the way I want, like help me understand what I need to do to evolve this. Just mm -hmm. help me understand. Mm -hmm. And that day I had a conversation with someone who was a perfect fit and she couldn't travel to Chicago. So she said, can I do it virtually? And I was like, okay, universe. Yes. Yes, you can do it virtually. Yeah. And then two days later, somebody else who was already bought their plane tickets realized they couldn't travel because of health reason. She wanted to do it virtually. So the week before the pandemic hit, we went in, we had half live, half virtual. And I told my assistant, you know, we're going to see, I don't know. I don't know. Cause we always thought we need to be in the room and we need to be helping you and looking yeah. over your shoulder and doing yeah. all that. And it, by lunch the first day, I was like, we're going virtual. This is so much better. And what I realized was people, for to do a creative process, they now they could be in their house, you know, and they could go pull the book off the shelf that they were thinking of or, you know, uh, walk in their neighborhood or, you know, go to their favorite yeah. coffee shop. And, and because we didn't have the because we had an even more tight parameter because we're, we're online from this time to this time, or, you know, you're going to go in a breakout room with the technical person at two o'clock versus we're in, all in the room together and you have 72 hours to figure it out. Like it made people a lot more creative and it made them a lot more productive. Interesting. Interesting. And so i so now I only do them virtual. Huh? And you're not, yeah. you're not going back even if you could, sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the expense, now, you know, before yeah. I was flying yeah. my assistant in from, she lives in BFE, Montana. Right. And so I'm like flying her in and then the, the cost and the travel. And then I got to rent the space. And then, yeah. you know, my attendees have to get a hotel room and travel if they're not in the city and, yeah. you know, time. And so I've been able to really up level the experience of add more support to the experience. So mm -hmm. it's become more done for you than done with you. Um, because I freed up funds by not yeah. having to rent a location. And, and now I send a little goodie bag ahead of time and people get this little treat. And so, you know, you're able to do tactile. it a little differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I it was very important to me to make sure that there was a tactile experience. And I think that's a really good key to creating a great virtual experience is to think about all the other, like all the senses, but all the other factors within an event and have something tactile if you can but makes sense for the event that you're doing you just said something you just said something interesting imp implicit in your description about your virtual events as well which is that um <laughs> knock on knock on wood as, assuming <laughs> success and re-emergence into a uh, not required lockdown economy yeah the live conference is going to have a hell of a lot of a hell of a lift to cost compete with the virtual one in the future. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and, and both from the cost of the event and the, the implicit cost of the event, like a plane ticket, hotels. Right. right. I mean, this is worth it again. Cause right. I could just, you know, put it on the monitor here and attend. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, there are events I will go to, I know that there are. 
For sure. For yes, sure. For sure. Yeah. And, and I mean, you know, I've, I've attended a few events recently and I spoke yeah. finally in person for the first time in a year and a half, Wow, which was just like, huh. And, <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> And, and there was, I had gotten so used to this box that I'm, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was, I forgot the things like, like being able to, to hear when everybody, you know, laughs at your joke yeah. or when everybody kind of, kind of goes, oh, or, you know, or, or to feel the energy of people leaning in and really paying attention to what you're saying versus, you know, yeah. kind of being a little, you know, pulled back. So those pieces you can't replicate online. Like there's, totally, totally. you know, you can try, you can, totally. you know, so I think there's a part of it that, you know, that you can only do online that we were uh, in person that we'll want to like do and recreate. And hmm. I think when we start doing things in person, it's really got to be worth it to the point you just made. It's got to be worth it yeah. for the cost yeah. of the host. It's got to be worth it for the cost of the attendee. Like you got to really, I think, up your game for the yeah. in-person events now that they're coming back. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this may be a bit distinct too. I, I found the email marketing world to be terrific, like nicest people of any industry I've worked in. And I've worked in a lot of them. And and who else is going to be there is going to be my number one criteria for whether I'll get my butt right. on the plane. Right. Exactly. Not just who's speaking, but it's like who else is going to be there mm. who I really want to, you know, break bread or drink, you know, drink a drink a brew with. Yeah. Is going to yes. matter, and seems like I have no problem with that as a business decision. That's like Absolutely. relationship stuff that makes the world world go around. Interesting sidebar story. I, I've I've studied with the same voice coach for about eight or nine years. Pretty serious singer. We had to move mm -hmm. that online. Oh, wow. oh, and some aspects of it have actually been better, which shocked both of us. Like, <laughs> what? We're gonna hey, voice. I say, Rob, we got to make this work, man, because it's like this is your business. Yeah. And we work the technical, the technical crap. Like, I'll figure that out. That's easy. What? And the stuff that was better, I never would have, I never would have expected to have have improved in the virtual setting. Um, that being said, <laughs> I think we'll go back to live, but <laughs> some things progressed faster. Uh, with virtual voice mm. lessons, but it's like, interesting. yeah, real, real surprise that. Yeah. And, yeah. And talk about something that you think is sort of only doable. Well, only even, person. Yeah. even just this morning, I had a follow-up appointment with my doctor and now all the follow-up appointments are via zoom. Are they really? Yeah. And wow. it's because I don't need to get my blood pressure checked. Like it wasn't yeah. one of those, but yeah. it was just to review some lab results and, you know, talk about some different things. And I was like, I, there, I don't even want to go back to yeah, an in-person yeah. for yeah. something like this because the half an hour that I spent with her online was perfect, mm -hmm. but it would have taken me two hours to, you know, grab the taxi the and parking, you know, blah, blah, get blah, over blah. and then right and, yeah. and then you get back and wait in a room, you know, yeah, I'm like, let's keep this part. Yeah. <laughs> well, and think, think about the, uh, think about the reduction in, in just in exposure and infection risks of you know 50 odd people going in and out of the doctor's office in an hour yeah this is better yeah. <laughs> this is exactly. better. we like this exactly. <laughs> we, we, we will stick with much more of this than we thought it's been as a guy who's done virtual for a long time i was like come on bring it on welcome to my world right? you know, like, i was like yeah, you said you were a digital you yourself were a digital nomad was that during before or after oh it was, it was a few years ago yeah okay so you've had experience with this as well Oh yeah. Okay. I what that's what's funny when the pandemic hit, my non-entrepreneur friends were like, Have you heard of this thing called Zoom? And I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I live in that thing. Like yeah. I'm yeah. like original like subscribers for Zoom. So <laughs> um, so yeah, but the, and and doing the I don't even know if I was using Zoom. I'd have to really think about it during my I'm sure I was during my road trip. Um, but yeah, I had, um, complete, I sold my condo. I got rid of 80% of my belongings and I just set off to travel the U S and to nice. have and some different, experience. not even in a car. You said to me, no car, I was planes and trains, no automobile. Cause I, <laughs> wow. so I Ubered, I did public transportation. I yeah. would rent a car every now yeah. and then, or use like a Turo or a zip car or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. The times when I did it, yeah. less stuff with you at the end of the year than you had at the beginning? Did oh, that's such a good question. You know, oh, you know what I did? I did because when I first, 
I remember the very first leg was uh, Chicago to Denver. Mm -hmm. And um, I had uh, two suit, two checked bags, a carry on roll away, and then a messenger bag. Okay. And so it's the very first one. And then I, I went up to weigh the bags and it was uh, one was 62 pounds and <laughs> one yeah. and, and one said, was 56 pounds. Yeah. And I was like, oh, what? And then I realized I ended up weighing the, the messenger and the other. And I realized I was carrying like 140 pounds of stuff. Whoa. And so after the first leg, I was like, I'm getting rid of, I'm getting rid of one of these check bags yeah, for yeah. sure. And really yeah, that. so I just found my way and then I got rid of that. And then, um, and then I figured out how to like a couple of times I, cause I knew where I was going to stay far enough in advance. I like sent a box of things or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. But then by the end of it, I was like, I don't even care. Like I, you, you think there's all this stuff that you need. And that was one of my greatest lessons of the whole thing was you need, I really needed like, two or th two pairs of shoes, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, a, a, a couple of different tops, a couple of different bottoms. Like you don't need as much as you think you do and you can wash things. Or I could always, I just thought I can always go to like target and grab another shirt if I'm right. desperately in need or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I had a, a, a partner in the explainer video business, Jordan, who had traveled around the world as a photographer with just a backpack. Wow. And, and he told me, less and less stuff as he as he went along until yeah. it was down to you know like you know the aware and a spare and it was mostly right. film and cameras in the backpack and a great experience for him uh the whole way along like huh we should all we should all anybody who doesn't travel should for that reason yeah. alone right absolutely you don't need absolutely. all that stuff right <laughs> um, dif dif difficult to keep that discipline once you're actually back you know and can accumulate possessions, I suppose, but I, well, yeah. And it's interesting because when I came back, I, I moved into a studio apartment and then um, I ended up, uh, cause I wanted to have a little bit of a nicer thing at uh, nicer space. I moved, moved into a, a co-living space mm -hmm. or what, what I, I was called lovingly the commune. And so that was uh, 14 <laughs> people in a three level. And oh, so wow. I basically had my room plus yeah. and then everything else was shared. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't have any, I, I had picked up like a bed when I came back, but then I got rid of that. So like, <laughs> I didn't own any furniture. And then about a year ago, I moved into my, my own space in a large apartment. And so it was really interesting because I had imperfect produce boxes where like my, my furniture for a while, <laughs> too, like, and there's still my side tables in my dining, yeah, in my living yeah. room. Cause I just haven't, it's, now I've got space to fill stuff up. And I have noticed that thing, that energy again of, well, you know, someday when I'm entertaining, I'll need these yes. dishes or, yeah. oh, I got to have, I, I got to have martini glasses and margarita glasses. And margarita glasses. You know, <laughs> yeah. Can't drink a margarita, not out of that pretty little glass. Like, right. yeah. <laughs> interesting how quickly it comes, starts to fill back up. Have you ever yeah. seen, there was a series of photographs, I want to say National Geographic did it, where they had they had a household in every country empty their house and they took picture of the family in front of their possessions. Wow. I haven't seen that. I would love to see that. It, it was a bit, well, you may, you, you want to smack, uh, smack all of us Americans right in the chops. Oh, like, I can't. dang, that's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Behind you, right. I, and yeah. you know, you know may, may I call, I've got a garage and it is not empty, although I do park the cars in it. So that's relative. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was actually one of the things that was, I really, really noticed on the road. Um, because, because I had gotten rid of, you know, like I said, 80% of my stuff, like I, mm. I put a little bit of stuff in storage, um, my Le Creuset cookware, which will never leave my possession. But, um, but Otherwise, like when I would, even when I go stay with people, they did Airbnbs or friends of friends and they would have all this stuff. And I was just so like, whoa. And then when I would go to, to meetings or whatever, people would, you know, like, you got to take this book or, you know, here's the goodie bag with all the, and I kept going, oh no, listen, I'm, I'm on the road. I have one suitcase. It weighs 50 pounds. Exactly. And like, <laughs> I don't have room for it. And people would, would get upset, you know, or, well, no, but, but it's free. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't need more stuff. Like, yeah. so it, it was really interesting for me to notice how much stuff people had, how much stuff they're trying to like pawn off on you, how yeah. Yeah. this kind of culture of like more and more and more and more and more is yeah. so pervasive. And, and possession is a two way equation, right? I own the thing, but the thing owns a piece of me. 
It really does. It's like you have to carry it. You notice that. But even if you don't have to carry it, you know, at some point, yeah, you're going to have to grapple with this. And I'm not willing to do a Marie, you know, Marie Kondo, especially on my bookshelf. She can go to hell. But uh. oh, I, yeah. <laughs> that was one of the hardest things to get rid of. Oh, I God. have a wall of books. Uh, cut my heart out. A wall you... of books. And I pared it down to five. And there was one that I took on the road with me. Wow. Now, yeah. hook this back at least laterally in, <laughs> into our professional domain. Don't we have the same problem with digital? Yes. Yes. We have the exact same problem. And I, it's so funny you say that because I noticed literally this morning 3,100 photos in my phone. <sighs> photos. Yeah. That's the perfect example, isn't it? You're like, yeah, oh, I'll take a picture. I'll take another picture. It's like, man we are so far beyond uh let's sort through the photos it's become this algorithmic dumping ground problem totally totally yeah, and like, then you have to buy now i have to pay 99 cents a month to for, get more storage. more storage more storage yeah 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 or you will go i'm gonna stick all of my photos on you know fill in the blanks platform why so that i can search for pictures of fred because <laughs> i'm never going to sort those things out and actually know which pictures fred's in period oh, full stop no <laughs> that's, that's the I, I literally this weekend just redid you know my kind of to do list yeah and this digital purge has been on there for three years or something but it's still on the wish list to yeah if I can organize those somehow yeah and, it, and it's it it's insidious in that it, you can leave it more you can leave it less visible to to a great extent right email inbox perfect example. You know, yeah. those 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 wonderful <laughs> evil people at Google is like, oh, oh no problem. Multiple gigs of storage in your inbox. You don't really have to delete things. Right. Really right. Should, yeah. I really, really, really should. Yeah. Because it's yeah. noisy. It's cluttered. It's 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 uh, and it gets it, worse and worse. There are little things that take your energy. So it's the I'm you know, I when I did um I did coach you for coach training back in, you know, the late 90s. And um, one of the principles they taught us, I remember early on, was called tolerations. And people have different words for things like this, but it's basically like when that that broken lamp, you know, the 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 lampshade or whatever, you don't use it every day or whatever. But you walk by there and you see it, and yeah. you you always know there's a part of you that knows you need to fix the lamp. Yeah. And it's like, and it doesn't it doesn't seem like it's a big deal, like you know whatever. It's not like you've got other lamps to use. It's not like you can't read at night or something. But it's just a little bit of energy that mm -hmm. pulls out and it's every time. And I feel like with our digital world, we're like that. Like I have five different email addresses, yeah, yeah. four that I check every day. Yeah, yeah. And all of them except one now, I, 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 I go through periods of this, but, a lot, but I will go through and like clear them out so that they're back to zero. Wow. Because... I find if I open the box and every, people have different opinions on this, but if you open, if I open the box and I see it's just full of messages that gives me anxiety. It's like the I broken like, lamp. Yeah. Yeah. All those things I got to do and then oh, I'm not paying attention to something. I'm dropping something or something. And then it's, it's like, now if I can like get it clean and out or get it to somebody else or do whatever, or I'm going to be honest every now and then I move them over to a folder or I just collect, Select all and just delete them all. Collect all. <laughs> I just know yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's really important, somebody is going to email me again and say, "I need X, Y, Z," and I'll take care of it. Then. <laughs> right, right. That 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 word, that insidious word, should. I should mm. like ah, I should everything. The reason I actually have a hard time on Twitter is because it never ends, and and I'm, I read books to the end, and like, I'm never going to read to the end of Twitter. So why would I even freaking start? Right. <laughs> like, no, you guys won't <laughs> shut up. <laughs> and and truthfully, I don't feel a big gap in my life for not being parked on Twitter all the time, right? No, I <laughs> I actually don't have. I think I kept I turned my Twitter account back on only because I had to be able to check hashtags for my yeah. clients when yeah. we do events. So, yeah. but I never post in there. And I, you know, just recently I did a staycation and I spent nine days off of email and then all social media platforms and Zoom. Um, wow. And it was wonderful. Yeah. And I, it made me change now how I'm doing and how often I'm interacting on social media platforms. Because I realized, you know, it doesn't, th this is not adding to me or my life or my creativity. Yeah. Um, and so it's just, it, it's not worth it.
Well, so. re recursive comment, but the whole business decision process about launching this uh, podcast, which, you know, is it help campaign genius? Yeah. Is it like personal brand stuff for me? I suppose. But that was, I was like, I don't want it or I don't need it. Truthfully, it's actually turned out that it's great conversations with people that I might not have met otherwise. Yeah. And the rest of it could be icing on the cake or not happen. And I really don't, I really don't care at this point. Right. Like, I, get to, I, get to, like, I get to hang out for an hour and talk with Leanne. That was, yeah. cool. is it a podcast and is it content media? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I guess we should do that as well. But if that were the only outcome, I don't think I'd bother. Honestly. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and you got to look to find those things anymore because the trivial will suck up your entire day. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is why, you know, for like the philosophy that we started with talking about email, like it, it matters. It, it, it matters. And the more practitioners who take that stuff seriously, I suspect the better for, for all of us. And eventually my prediction is we're, we're starting to back into, you know, what, Culturally, we need to regulate and think about this and put some guidelines and guardrails and rules and seat belts and headlights and so on in place. Europe's ahead of us mm -hmm. on, on this stuff to a great extent, but we'll we'll start going there, I suspect, more and more in the US because you know, we can't we can't leave everyone's nog in the wild, wild west with absolutely no right. rules, or we all end up just stupid. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't doesn't pencil out in the long run. Well, what a delight to talk with you. Any parting <laughs> advice for people? Uh, like, who's who's your target? Who's your target? You know, client that becomes you know twenty two hundred and one on your list that you can <laughs> really help with their business. Yeah, um, I love love working with uh, coaches, speakers, and authors. Okay. So people who they, they know who they're about, they know who they want to serve. Yeah. They're usually the face of the company and, um, you know, it's their personal brand yep. and they are either using email and not getting the results they want. Mm -hmm. I can help them or they're not using email because they're like, I just don't even know how or what. To start. Or yeah. So, mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So, and now you get to, now you'll get to follow your own advice, launching your book. Oh yeah. Yeah, with with a heck of a head start because you've got a list you've invested in for a long time. Yes, yes, absolutely. Are yeah. you excited about that? Yeah, I'm very excited about it. I think it'll be a lot of it's fun. It's fun to do something different and put yourself out there in a different way. Yeah, yeah, true. I had uh, I had uh, Jenna Tiffany uh, on as a guest. Oh, I think a couple months ago, and she had just launched. Uh, she just launched a book that she spent a good couple of years. Uh, writing and she said some of the same things that you did about the process of writing a scene like she, she I already had all this stuff you know I kind of knew all this stuff but then as we talked about it more so oh, but I did sit in a hammock and outline or sometimes right. write and sometimes type and yeah so it uh, externalizing anything takes work takes discipline to get it done yeah and it, and it also takes I think one of the bigger things for me and my my website was really more tapped into this part of the process, but the, the was really just being like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to draw my line in the sand. You know, I'm going to like, this is, I'm going to stand for this. Okay. And, you know, so, you know, putting a book out there or a website out there, or even yeah. in a micro level, putting an email out there is yeah. taking a stand for something and, and saying, this is what I believe. And, and I think it's important enough that I'm going to put it out there for somebody to consume. Yeah. And sometimes I think, you know, women, especially it, it takes us a little bit to kind of own that and say like, yes, I'm willing to do this and I don't care what other people think and I don't care what they say and I don't care if it's perfect, but I'm just going to go do it anyway. Good for you. Good for you. And yeah, and, and you're right. Well, and, you know, getting anything, and I, I agree it's harder for women, but getting, getting anything and actually committing it, not just committing to having it out there, but committing to saying that's mine. I did that. I wanted to do that. I'm responsible for it. Yes, is a it's a, it's a it's a big step. I th I think it really pays off in the long run too. That, I think so too. That, you know, committed content or something like that. Mm -hmm. well, I cool. like that phrase. That's a good phrase. Committed. Yeah, content. we just came up with that. Let's take <laughs> <laughs> write, write down. Write it down. I'm gonna write it down. <laughs> well, we're nearing the top of the hour, and I asked for a half an hour. So thank you for hanging in there, continuing to talk with me. What a pleasure. Yay. This was so much fun. <laughs> well, we'll wrap it up. My guest today has been Leanne Marie Webster, 
who a quick Google search will lead you to on LinkedIn and elsewhere. Leanne, thanks so much for the time. Mm -hmm.